good morning. How's everyone doing? Am I live? Yes, I am. All your applause, I couldn't even hear whether I was on the speaker, but I am. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to FutureStack 2019. Here we are in New York City, so excited to be back here. Um, and this is our seventh Future Stack, which is just mind-blowing to me that uh, uh, we've been doing this for, for so long. Um, and it is without question, um, to me, the most important and the biggest one we've ever had, especially when you consider all the amazing announcements we're gonna make today. I hope you're all ready. I hope you're gonna be able to take some notes. There's gonna be so much stuff we're gonna announce. There's just a lot to digest, but we've built an awful lot of amazing software to help you all. And, uh, and, 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 and we're gonna go through a lot of content during this keynote. I'm gonna take you through six new innovations that we're announcing today, six major innovations today. Um, and, 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 and we believe every one of these are gonna be transformational for each of you in, in how you pursue more perfect software. Because at the end of the day, the reason why I do what I do and what we do at, what we do at New Relic is because we have a love affair with software. I think that's why most people get into technology at some point is that first moment when they, they discover they can do magical things on a computer, it's an incredible creative outlet. And then when it's really special is when the software you build is used by other people. Um, and I know that's why, you know, for me that happened when I got my first computer, it had three kilobytes of RAM. It was something called a VIC-20. I got it in 1982. And uh, yeah, rock and roll. It's still in my uh, office today. I don't think it works anymore. But, uh, um, but I, I discovered at that point the joy of building software and, um, and what you can do with it. And of course, I never would have guessed back then that software was not only going to be something you can play with and, and have fun with and do games on, but would change the world the way it has by now 2019. And that's why it's not enough just to build software. Our mission is to help you build more perfect software. So a vision where everything on the internet works sub-second every time, and there are no crashes and there are no errors. I mean, that's, that's the bold vision we pursue. And we may never get there. It's kind of like a hospital saying we never want to see anybody sick ever again. But it's, it's, it's a mission worth pursuing, right? And that's, that's what we're in business to do, is to help you all create more perfect software. Why? Because your software is your business. This is not a secret anymore, right? Andreessen was so right when he said software is eating the world in virtually every industry and in every vertical and every type of company. Your software is your business and therefore it's not something you have the option of whether or not you measure. You have to observe everything in your software and everything in the infrastructure that supports that software. Nothing that runs in production should go unmeasured. And that's why today, what has become a household name is observability. That's what we call it today. We call the practice of measuring everything that runs in production observability. And really when it comes down to it, observability is putting visibility and com com collecting telemetry data about technology in four forms. There are four types of data that you collect in order to have observability. There are metrics, events, logs, and traces, right? And so, so the industry is standardizing on this, recognizing that your software is your business and you need, in order to understand your software, you need all of this data. You need metric data to track a metrics value over time. You need event data, often billions of events. Every time somebody presses that purchase button, you want that instance of a data so you can do deep granular analytics on it. You know you need logs to, to debug things and to get to some detail that only logs can provide. And finally, you need to trace across all of the services and stitch together those traces to show one distributed transaction or an aggregate of distributed transactions in a way that helps you really understand what's the end-to-end -end performance. And so since the world has moved to observability, what's resulted is all those metrics, events, and logs and traces have gone into a lot of tools. Your metrics may go into a great metric uh, data store like Prometheus. Right, so you got a bunch of time series metric data in Prometheus. You might dump your logs in something that's kind of text-oriented, like Elasticsearch. And then traces, you might be using open telemetry and putting them in Zipkin, right, or some, 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 something like that. And so you have a proliferation of data stores for all this data, 
and a proliferation of tools to present the data. So you go to Zipkin to look at your traces, and then you lose your context because you've got that distributed trace, and you want to see, oh, there's a piece of log data that'll help me finally diagnose the problem. Now I got to go over to a logging product to see that. So you have these proliferation of observability tools. And when I talk to customers, I hear not that you want more tools. You have to have more tools today because there's nothing you don't want to observe. But you don't want more tools. You want a platform. Observability requires a platform. And when I'm talking about a platform, I mean a real platform with a capital P. What do I mean when I talk about a platform with a capital P? Well, it has to have three characteristics. It has to be open, connected, and programmable. Open. The platform has to support open instrumentation and telemetry types. Any one of these metrics, events, logs, and traces should be fully supported as first-class data inside the platform. Okay, whether it comes from for example, our agents or from something that we've never written before. So that's super important. It has to be connected. What do I mean by that? Well, it's not enough to dump all your metrics, events, logs, and traces into one place. You need to see the relationships between it. You need to understand that if there is a sick service or a, sick dis or, or a distributed trace, you want to connect all of the various data types into one integrated experience so you can troubleshoot faster. You understand the dependencies between um, a microservice and its database, or a mobile application and the service that it talks to. And then you want to connect it to the infrastructure it runs on. That connectedness is so important to troubleshooting. And finally, and most importantly, it's not a platform unless you can write software on it. It's a tool. Right? A bunch of dashboards are not a platform. A platform is something you write software on. And so we believe what the industry needs is not just more dashboarding. It needs something you can build applications on. The reason why you have so many tools is because there's this edge case that you want to do with the data that some other tool does, and you have to leave one product to use another. Programmability gets you to the final mile to have it all in one place. And that's what New Relic 1 is. New Relic 1 is the world's first and only observability platform as of today. We're so excited about this. The world's first observability platform. It's open. It allows you to instrument everything. It's connected. You understand the relationships between all these data points. And most importantly, it's programmable, making it a real platform. And we're going to go into detail on what that really means. But before I go into the details of New Relic 1 as the world's first and only observability platform, let me take you just on a brief history lesson of, of New Relic and how we got to today. If you're all here at FutureStack, you have a lot of familiarity with our products, so I don't want to spend much time on it. But just to set some context, what you all probably have deep familiarity with is our, is our flagship product, which is APM. Um, and in addition to APM, we have browser, mobile, infrastructure, synthetics. These are all great products. And essentially, what they all share is this very easy to use on-ramp of download one of our many agents, say the Go agent, or the, the, the Node agent, or the Java agent, or the iOS agent for mobile. Put that inside your software, and instantly, deep telemetry in real time goes into the New Relic cloud. Right? You know all of that. And it's great that it's all going in one place. We've talked about having all your stuff in one place for some time now. That's really powerful. What you may not know is it's not just going into one cloud. It's actually going into one database, NRDB. NRDB is, without question, the world's most powerful telemetry database. How many of you use New Relic Insights? It's actually our fastest growing product. It's incredibly powerful. Essentially, what Insights is offering you is the ability to access that raw data in NRDB to solve all sorts of ad hoc problems and run queries at lightning speed without worrying about what the schema is or what the data is inside the database. We will give you instant answers to all your questions for all of that telemetry data. 
We've had all of that for some time, but what we've been hard at work on and what we're excited to announce today is that we're opening up the capabilities of NRDB to support all open telemetry data. That's what we mean when we talk about our open strategy. So that this one database with one query language is going to support metrics, traces, and logs, including all of the New Relic agent data. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. And so let me go into some detail on what it specifically means. And by doing that, I'm going to go to our first new product announcement. It's called New Relic Metrics. New, Mel new Relic Metrics will allow you to drop in within a few seconds. If you use Prometheus, anybody using Prometheus today? Drop in New Relic Metrics Prometheus adapter, all of that metric data going straight into the New Relic platform. So you don't have to switch tools between New Relic 1 and your metrics um, capable uh, technology like Prometheus or Istio, if you're using Drop Wizard, or if you're using the Open Telemetry standard, we're fully embracing Open Telemetry. All of that data, Open Census, all of it going straight into New Relic. It's super easy, and now you've got one unified place to have all your metric data and all that visibility complemented with everything that come out of our agents. Um, let's just show you, you know, an example of what's involved. If you use uh, Kubernetes, just drop us in, edit the YAML file, a couple, couple lines, and within you know, a two-minute exercise, you're gathering metric data that you can present right inside New Relic, all in one place, super fast, one query language, one database, and then you can com combine it with the data we have from our applications. This is a game changer. In fact, don't, don't take my word for it. Take one of our customers' words. Eric Bursch at USA Today calls this a game changer because he understands that when you're in troubleshooting, switching between tools is very expensive. How is it expensive? Well, when you're troubleshooting, every second counts. And context switching really hurts your ability to troubleshoot effectively. So if you have to go from one product to another, reset the time window, try to find the context, try to find the right metric name that, that's re that relates to the problem that you were in another product, you've lost precious minutes in troubleshooting that you can't afford to lose. And so New Relic Metrics now is our first step towards openness. To give you a sense of it, prior to today, most people would have thought of New Relic as a company where in order to use our products, you need to deploy our agents. And of course, we're always going to have the most powerful, capable agents to just drop in to, to put that visibility. But with our open strategy now, I can imagine customers using, going all in on the New Relic platform without using a single one of our agents. So if you want to go all manual instrumentation or open source telemetry sources, you can do that very well in New Relic 1. The second leg of that stool is another new product we're announcing, New Relic Traces. New Relic Traces allows you to use open telemetry instrumentation or Zipkin, if you use Zipkin for distributed tracing, to complement the tracing we have with, that come out of the box of our agents today. Again, it's kind of similar in the strategy to what I, what I was just talking about with metrics. So what I mean by that is, in a complex environment, particularly a large environment, you're going to have a bunch of software that, um, that you may have instrumented with our agents that you don't have time to go manually instrument to, um, to do distributed tracing with. So we've got the zero code option to drop that in. But then there are other services that you want more control over. You don't want to put any agent inside them. You want complete control over how they behave in production. And we're offering an open source, SDK that does nothing but collect and forward that trace data using the open standard APIs that the community has standardized on, like OpenTelemetry. So what's cool about that is you can use these both together. And it's up to you to decide whether you want to use one of our 11 language agents, I believe, um, or you want to use, certainly if you include browser and mobile, um, or you want to manually instrument yourself. It all comes into the same gorgeous user interface, all in New Relic 1, to connect the dots across your entire environment. This is a big contrast to the other folks in the world who say, if you want to use tracing with us, you must rewrite all your software to be visible with these APIs. We give you that choice. And if you want to do it, it works perfectly well in New Relic 1. 
If you've got something that you don't want to spend the time to manually instrument, drop in our agent. Either are perfectly valuable first-class ways to do your tracing, without question, the best tracing capabilities in the industry. So check out New Relic Traces. That's GA Today, too. So we've got, we've got New Relic Metrics GA Today, New Relic Traces GA Today. And the third, and one of the most exciting things that, that, that we're going to announce today, without question, is New Relic Logs. New Relic Logs GA Today. So what is special about New Relic Logs? Well, first off, not having to leave New Relic when you've got 90% of the way there in diagnosing a problem. You're in an application problem, and there's this last bit of debug information in a log message somewhere. Why switch context? Why lose your context and lose those precious minutes of troubleshooting to go to another tool that doesn't even know what your application is? Right? So, so that's the obvious benefit. But here's some of the other benefits that you may not be aware of. Most other logging products are index-based. When a piece of text comes in, they have to spend a bunch of time and energy indexing that text so that it can be queried at a reasonable speed in the future. NRDB is different. It's built for massive multi-tenant query processing so that when one customer writes a query, it's so powerful that it doesn't need indexes to come back in 100 milliseconds or less. What that means for you is you can just dump all your logs, just like all your other data, in NRDB, and you don't have to worry about managing it. You don't have to worry about whether or not the query is going to be fast because you did or didn't manage an index like the way you have to with Elasticsearch. Um, and that index, A, is a pain to manage, and B, often adds a lot of time and delay to ingest at high volumes so that your logs are arriving late and you can't use them to troubleshoot real-time data. So, those are big advantages of New Relic Logs. Just drop us in, it's easy to use, and it's ready to go. So to give you a better sense of New Relic Logs, we're going to have Julian Juca come up. Julian is our general manager for New Relic Logs, and he's uh, going to tell you a little bit more. So Julian, hey, welcome Larry. here. How are you? It is, it is fantastic to be here today. It is fantastic to announce New Relic Logs. I am really, really excited. This is truly an amazing thing to bring into the New Relic product line. It is GA to everyone today. We encourage you to come up and try our trial, which goes up to five terabytes a day, available to everyone. Five terabytes just for free trial. Wow. That's right. That's awesome. OK, so, Lou, you're saying this is fast? Yes. Let's do a demo. All right, let's right, do it. Right, live demos. Everyone loves live demos, right? Yeah. Right? OK, so this is our logging product. This should be available to everyone in New Relic 1. Make sure I'm in the right account. This is our production logging everything. This is every piece of log data that comes out of New Relic here right now. We generate around 10 terabytes of log data a day. It's kind of middle of the road. It's not huge. It's not tiny. To show you how fast this is, I'm going to go and do a search that pulls up every warning out of every log message that New Relic's generating. That's it. It's two seconds, not even, for us to go and slam through all of that data and find every warning that's being generated. That's awesome. Right? Right? Come on. It's fast. Lightning fast. You can slice and dice your data. You can explore it. I can go and have a look at specific services, drill down on, for example, our RPM warnings. And because it's built on top of NRDB, it thrives on these facets. It thrives on having uh, data that you can poke at and explore. You can go and drill down. You can see these time series breakdowns, which hosts are generating the most warnings. The data is yours to control. It's malleable. I really like it. So awesome. That's right. really impressive. Super fast. So better than that, this is, the, this is the part that makes me really excited. This is the connected part. Neuralic logs let you get to the why faster. OK. Right? What do you mean? Let's go to our Kubernetes Explorer. Oh, I love this product. This right? <laughs> it's, I mean, honestly, it is. It's beautiful. Look at this thing. <laughs> OK, so I can go and find a pod that's having a bad day. We've added these wonderful little links. Single click. I can go and dive into pods, into containers, into namespaces to find exactly why, what's going wrong. We can see here, every five minutes, this pod's running out of memory and crashing. This is a live tail. I can explore this data. 
It's there at your fingertip. This is the why. Why is it misbehaving? That's awesome. We do more. All right. But wait, there's more. <laughs> You've already got my check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, distributed tracing. You were mentioning this before? Yeah. We see all of the functions that are being invoked on like re request response across multiple servers. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to see the, uh, the log data for that as well? I'd love to do that. Right? Yeah. All right, so we have an application. I'm gonna find trace for it. Nice pretty trace. Interesting things happening. We've got a new button here. Look at this. We have zeroed in on exactly all of the logs from that beginning to the end of that in entire Across all the services. Across all services. No That's more, amazing. no less. At a single click, it's presented right to you. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And this is available today nice. to everyone. Send us your data. Try it out. Awesome, Julian. So how, so how would you get started? Like, let's say I've got Logstash or something like that. Yeah, so we support Logstash, FluentD, FluentBit, AWS CloudWatch, uh, Kubernetes, and we're also in the AWS FileLens beta, which is really fantastic. Nice, nice. So just drop it in, the logs come in, and they're showing up in New Relic 1. You don't have to toggle between tools, find the logs that matter in the heat of the moment when you're troubleshooting. Single click, there are your answers. That's awesome. Right. Julian, great job to you and the team. Hey. Congratulations, Thank you. awesome product. So I hope you get a better appreciation for why does all this stuff in one database matter, right? First of all, pretty fast, huh? Pretty fast, like 10 terabytes of logs a day, that's a pretty meaningful amount of logs all in just one New Relic account, and NRDB just, just, just crunches through it like it's nothing, right? So, and, and, and the fact that that's also the same place where the application telemetry data is and the infrastructure telemetry data is, that's why it's so easy to jump from a Kubernetes pod to its logs or a distributed trace to its logs. If those are in different places, that's a pain in the butt to integrate, okay? Not at New Relic one platform for all of your telemetry data, the best telemetry database, the most powerful one in the world. It's New Relic 1. But it's not enough to see it all. If there's one thing that came across in that demo, it was the connectivity, the relationships between your telemetry, the relationships between logs and traces or entities like your Kubernetes cluster. And that's where connected comes in. And, and, and so I've talked a bit about it, but what you probably noticed was that gorgeous user interface that hosted all of that functionality. We've designed a new user interface we launched in May to deliver the connected end-to-end -end one place to see it all. And that's the New Relic 1 user interface. New Relic 1 is now your new homepage for New Relic. So if you see across the bottom there, we've still got one-click links to APM, browser, synthetics, mobile, et cetera, right? You can always go to those, those products you're familiar with. We recognize you know and love those products. But when you want to start at a high level view, you want to look across all your New Relic accounts. Some of our larger customers have hundreds and hundreds of New Relic accounts. So if you have access to hundreds of New Relic accounts, those accounts might have visibility to millions of entities all those Lambda functions and servers and, and microservices and mobile apps, put it all in one place. Make it globally searchable. Put your favorites on the homepage so you can jump straight into those things across different accounts, right? So this is the new homepage for, for the new Relic user interface, and it beautifully complements the existing products we have, like APM, where you can drill into APM when you want to troubleshoot a specific microservice or what have you. And New Relic 1 has dis been designed from the ground up to deliver a connected experience. And an example of that is the world's only pan enterprise service maps. What do I mean by pan enterprise service maps? Well, as I mentioned, uh, New Relic 1 is designed to span across all of your accounts. And that includes the maps. So let's say you've got one team working on one service that's dependent on a service managed by another team in another part of the company. That happens all the time. If you're using an on-premise legacy APM product, they are probably deployed in different instances of that product, and you can't follow that trace across, right? So at some point, 
Companies will split out their instances either on accounts in a SaaS offering or in deployments of an, AP, of, of an on-premise offering. And in when, when you do that, you lose your pan enterprise view. New Relic Service Maps bridges those gaps because it's all in one database, all in NRDB. We can cross those lines for you so that you can see the end-to-end -end picture all in one unified view. That's why our customers love these service maps that nobody else can match when you're in a large environment. The second thing we're doing is we're bringing this context and connectivity. You saw that gorgeous Kubernetes cluster spore. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that gorgeous? That, that cluster spore is gorgeous. <laughs> and this is where dashboards just kind of run out of steam. You know, we love dashboards. We've got amazing dashboarding capability, but sometimes you need to go beyond dashboards to build an application, a custom visualization. It's not just that beautiful visualization where you've got the hosts around the end that are hosting these pods, and then you've got the actual pods or workloads, and then we color the ones that are having problems. We color the host, that little yellow on the host on the right, I think means it's running low on uh, memory. And, and so, that's a nice way to visualize it, but then it's interactive, and when you respond to a click, you can drill down, right? So you click on that red pod, and it goes deeper. That's where dashboards run out of steam and applications take over. So, so we do that really well in New Relic 1, and, 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 and nobody else can do Kubernetes the way we do. So, so that's a capability that's in New Relic 1 today. If you're a New Relic infrastructure customer, it comes for free. And then we organize all your stuff. If you've got hundreds of New Relic accounts, hundreds of thousands of entities, you want to organize them by tag, you want to instantly search in them, and you want to see all of your stuff, not just all your dashboards, but all of what we call entities. An entity could be um, a, um, an S3 bucket, or it could be a Lambda function. The thing is, you want them all in one place, all organized by tag, so you can see these, and more importantly, you can see the relationships between them. We do that automatically in the Entity Explorer. That's all part of New Relic 1, all available to you today. Um, and has been actually for a little bit of time. We also have New Relic for serverless, New Relic, New Relic serverless for AWS Lambda, so that we go just as deep into your Lambda code as we do in APM, so your functions and your services all deeply instrumented and all seen in the same place, so the relationships between them are clear to you. And if you want to talk about a clear business value case, for those of you who know and love Lambda, it's an incredible technology, but a big part of what you pay for when you run Lambda is how long it takes for that function to run. And if it takes twice as long, your bill's going to nearly double. Right? So, so if you're not using New Relic, for Am New Relic serverless, you're probably spending more than you need to to run your Lambda functions in production today. So that's a big deal. And we encourage you to try it. The customers who are using it love it today. And finally, with all that data in one place, we have these curated views. We've also got a fantastic dashboarding experience, including now a great point-and-click UI. So those of you who love, know and love NRQL, our query language, it's like a surgeon's scalpel that will allow you to query pretty much anything in that database. But now we've added this nice graphical UI to allow you to construct queries, too, without needing to learn our query language if you just want to chart something. And that not only includes the agent data we've always collected, but now all this open telemetry data, too. So that's there and ready for you to go. So that's all what we have in the connected experience. And when you think about it, if we have all these relationships and we have all this data, all this observability data, all coming into one platform and one database, it's actually the perfect place to do intelligent things with it, to automate what people do manually. And to go deeper into that, I'm, ready to, I'm excited to announce the fourth major announcement of the day, which is New Relic AI, smarter incident response for develop busy DevOps and SRE teams. So the way to think about the problem we're solving with New Relic AI is actually to, to use an analogy that involves my dear mother. So my mom, when she texts me, doesn't just text me once. She texts me, bzz, bzz, bzz. Bzz, bzz, bzz. I get like four or five messages all at once. And then, and then my dad will text me too, and I'll get like a, a collection of texts from different people. And before I know, my phone is basically going off the hook. Um, in fact, I should turn it off now. She might be saying, nice job on the speech, Lou, if she's streaming it. So anyway, 
what I want is to roll up all those events into one giant call your mom, you know, because she's excited about what she saw in Jeopardy last night or something. Um, provide some intelligence on it, especially and often in, 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 in the real world when you're handling alerts, it's not just all coming from one thing, it's coming from many things. If you've got a serious production issue, let's say in a database, the database fires an alert. The application that depends the database fires an alert. Maybe the, uh, the host underneath the database is out of memory, so that's firing an alert. So you're getting an alert storm. And it's really hard to sort out what's the real situation. Take all that noise and turn it to signal. That's where New Relic AI comes in. We've tried out with a couple of our larger customers and we're seeing easily in excess of 80% reduction in alert noise. That's amazing, 80% reduction in alert noise. That's New Relic AI. So that you, when you get a signal, you get a contextual alert that tells you what's going on and you're gonna pay attention to it because you're not getting 300 of them, you're getting a manageable number of them. So we encourage you to sign up for the beta. Go talk to your New Relic rep and uh, get going with New Relic AI. That'll be going GA um, towards uh, early next year, but it's in beta today. And the, the numbers we're seeing are incredibly compelling. So that's New Relic AI. And finally, let me talk about the third leg of the New Relic One platform which is, in order to be a platform, you have to be programmable. And let me explain a little bit of how we got to New Relic 1 programmability. The story actually starts at the New Relic 1 all product and engineering offsite. We do this offsite every year. We, I think this year we had about 600 developers, engineers, technical people all come to a gorgeous remote location and, and talk about how we're gonna build amazing software, what are best practices, technologies, and tools to build the best software we can build. And I remember the offsite we had two years ago, um, and I was blown away and took away two particular presentations that really got my attention. The first was a presentation that says, at New Relic, we're gonna standardize internally on GraphQL as a way to make it easier for New Relic developers to build applications without needing to know what data is where. Anyone using or familiar with GraphQL? Incredible technology, right? Just take, makes developing software so much easier. And the second presentation I saw was a set of technologies we built to make it so that all you need to do is write a React component and focus just on your React component, and we'll take away all of the challenge and pain out of making that uh, React component run inside the New Relic UI environment. Now, let me, let me be clear. This React te development technology and GraphQL, as presented two years ago, have been designed to help New Relic engineers go faster. And those are the core technologies that, that Julian used when he built the logging product that we use with the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer. That's what we use to build those gorgeous user interfaces. But what occurred to me was the story of Amazon, and we're gonna have Dave McCann from Amazon coming up soon, but Amazon Web Services was born out of Amazon solving their own problem for their engineering teams. They recognized that they were having trouble provisioning infrastructure and they needed to do it faster, and Andy Jassy's brilliance was in recognizing that this was technology that not only Amazon needed, but that lots of other companies needed as well, and cloud computing was born. So we decided to make a similar bet. We recognize that all of this powerful data can be used for so many use cases, many of them very specific to your business, and that no one company can build all the applications that can take advantage of this data on its own. There's so many things you want to do with that data. In fact, what you often do is go to a different tool if it can do one little thing to present the data in a certain way to solve a problem for a specific user, you'll buy a whole separate tool just for that use case. It's not because you want 37 tools, but you need the ability to see the data presented in a way that actually solves your problem. Well, today, that's possible because New Relic One is fully programmable, where you can build your own applications on New Relic One. This is a big deal. I can't tell you how excited we are for it. Woo! 
So if you can imagine it, you can build it. Imagine what is the business problem your app is solving? If, you're in, if you are a retailer, do you want to see your retail store performance in real time? If you have an IoT application, do you want to dial up and go straight into that device to see a specific device's health and performance right now? Is there something where dashboards just aren't enough? Well, you're one React component away from building capabilities, or we can help build them for you. The, pro the, the, the main thing is the platform enables all these incredibly powerful use cases. And, and I know that's a pretty generic statement. Platforms are often hard to understand without, without seeing examples of what you can build on it. And recognizing that, I decided to raise the bar on the team. I said, yeah, I knew, uh, team, I know we want to deliver programmability by Future Stack New York. Um, but let's also see what applications we can build on the platform. And let's see what we can give away. So what we did was we brought 25 people together in Chicago three weeks ago. We hacked for a few days. And we're calling it Future Hack. And, I'm, and I expect there to be more future hacks in the future. Uh, and, and, and what we did was we had a goal of delivering five open source applications that aren't just like simple examples. They're actually things that would be useful to all of you that you'd want to put into your new Relic environment today. And they should serve as inspiration for you all to build your own applications on the platform, either by forking the source code um, or by taking ideas from those applications themselves. Well, we, we had a goal of five, and we came away with 12. 12 new open source applications that you're going to be able to, de to deploy on your Neuralic One uh, account starting today. So to give you a sense of what we're doing, let me show you a demo of some of these applications. Who wants to see some of these demos? <laughs> All right. So. Um, Here's that gorgeous New Relic One homepage I was talking about. I'm one click away from APM browser. I can search for anything. If I type in a service name or if I type a tag, I can get to anything from here. That's been in the market for a while. We now have logs here, which is gorgeous. I encourage you all to jump into logs. But we have all these things down here. We call them launchers. You probably don't have many of these on your homepage yet, but I've got lots on mine because I just love to build stuff and play with new stuff. So here are some of the ones that we have uh, on my homepage here. And let me start with one that is uh, one that um, our networking team built. So um, we have, uh, since NRDB is the most powerful telemetry database in the world, we put some network telemetry in NRDB. And then we built this gorgeous visualization that shows the network traffic in real time of what's going on into New Relic. And let's just crank up the refresh rate so it's got a little bit of, you know, it's got a little bit of uh, animation to it. And you can see how it's, how it's doing. And then I can see, for example, the network traffic going through there. Uh, let's see. It's probably because I'm moving around too fast. There we go. So, so that's pretty cool. That's, this is available for free. If you have a network device, any standard network device that throws off IP fix or SFlow data, that now is real-time network telemetry. We've got this gorgeous visualization of internal network traffic. So you can see it all, all in New Relic One. Pretty cool stuff, especially considering it's free and open source. So who wants to try that one out in their environment? Awesome. The next one I want to show is a project called Neon. So Neon, we actually, our customer asked us to build this for them. This customer is a, a major retailer, and they've got fulfillment and distribution centers around the country. And they wanted to roll up data, again, in New Relic, often from many different accounts, and simplify it into a simple, high-level view of how healthy is my business, OK, by looking at the technology that drives their business. And so here's an example of a Neon dashboard. You can build your own by just defining your KPIs and doing it in a nice grid. So what we have uh, on the rows are locations. And then we got business functions on the, on the columns. And you can define um, what's going on on any of these in a, in a pretty simple way. Let's see if this one has. Oh, here we go. So here's like Neon shipping, 
tracing what's been going on for the Tracy shipping policy over the last 30 days, and you can see the incidents going on in here. So a really nice, powerful way to summarize at a high level what's going on in your business. Again, open source and available for you to put on your CIO's dashboard today, taking all this data we have and simplifying it in a way that makes sense to the senior leaders in your business. So that's available on New Relic One today. Just check out the, the repo on GitHub. The next one we're going to do is probably a little dicier because I coded it a week or two ago. Um, but I, uh, I was inspired in talking to our infrastructure team and found out that there's a lot of data actually in, in, in what we're collecting from our infrastructure agent that can do more with containers. And so I bet you virtually all of you are using containers in production, and you'd love to get a better handle on how your containers are behaving. So, so I built something called the Container Explorer. And, uh, Let's see how we, how we do here when we get our spun up. So let me pick a, an account here. So <clears throat> this particular team has a small number of containers, a couple thousand. So what we're looking at is a grid that shows all the containers, or the top 2,000 containers in this particular case. And you can segment these by a variety of ways to drill into it. So you could, for example, say, oh, I'm going to look at environment. And, and look at the production. So anything with this, this, this tag, environment production, there's my subset of containers. I can see CPU, memory, and disk. And then I can click one, and I support it, and I see here's that container. And here's the cool thing. Because New Relic 1 is a connected platform, all I'm doing on this is using React and GraphQL. Right? You, this code is all available for you to play with and, and fix, because believe me, lots of engineers have fixed my you know, CEO-level code. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> But what's cool was it was also easy to connect this container to the host it's running on. So this is all part of the platform, right? I can say, oh, jump to the host it's running on. I'm in New Relic 1. I've got context, right? Or jump to the application that it's running. So now I can connect containers to their applications and infrastructure, all with an open source uh, New Relic 1 observability application that will be on GitHub soon. That's, one of the, that's not one of the 12, actually. That's one that's coming soon when I stop being a CEO and get another weekend to work on this. Um, so anyway, that's, that's containers. Let me show you another one. Actually, this one I'm really excited about because uh, let me put a little context in it. Here's our, our Entity Explorer. You can see how much stuff we have in here, lots and lots of stuff. And we've got, we're a pretty large company now. And so there are so many microservices, for example, that it's really hard to know what these things are, what they do, and who to ask if they're having a problem. So let's say you own a service and you're troubleshooting it in our APM product, and it's calling something that's slow, and it's got a weird name, or it's something you don't recognize. Has anyone have that happen to them, where they've got there's some service running production, they don't know what it does, right? That happens to us all the time. So what we did was we said, you know what? There's a lot of information in GitHub. Let's connect the best of New Relic 1 and GitHub to give you some insights into this. So for this particular thing, I go and I see it's README right there. This is the GitHub repository that is associated with this service, all in New Relic 1. And more importantly, if it's having a problem, here are the coders to go bug, because they're the ones who have made the most commits. Who would use that in New Relic 1? That'd be awesome, huh? This is what I mean when I say there's so much value in the data we collect, and if we could just make it programmable, then we can help you solve new kinds of problems. Right? It's really hard to talk in abstract. When you see the use cases on this platform, not only see them, but you can download the code. This is up on developer.neurelic.com. You're going to have links to all these repos. So, um, oh, let me just show you one more thing on GitHub. So how on earth did we do the association? Well, um, let's pick another one. Let's say this one has not been associated yet. What we do is we, we get the name of this thing. It's called Data Dictionary Service. And then we search GitHub for things that we search the readme, and we search the name of the repo and all this stuff. And we say, does one of these look like it matches? And I'm going to call, I bet you this Data Dictionary Service is the one that matches my, um, my service. So I'm just going to do one click. Now it's associated. So that's a one-time thing. It's associated. And now every time anybody in my company looks at that service, they see who's working on it. You've got context, right? One observability platform to see it all. That's free and available for you to install in New Relic 1 today. OK, just one or two more. Um, I'm excited about this one in particular because a customer built one of these. One of our customers, Eric Spence over at um, Genesis, 
he said, you know, when I'm looking at production, I'm obviously looking at all of my stuff, but I'm also, there's a bunch of stuff we depend on that I want to know if they're healthy as well too, right? So everyone, every, every service provider has a status page, right? I don't want to go to 14 status pages to know if they're all working. So he wrote something. It turns out most of the status pages are built by um, this great little company that Atlassian bought called uh, statuspage.io. And so let's consume all the status page data. It's not only they, do you publish a website, they actually publish APIs. So let's just take that JSON, put it all in New Relic 1. And so we can say, all right, GitHub is up, but if we want to see the history, the incident history, you've got this gorgeous, nice little UI. It looks all pretty, and it, but it's in context, right? So I can see the GitHub's uh, availability and status page information all without leaving New Relic 1, and I can add more status pages if I wanted to by just clicking this Edit button. So that's available for free. Who wouldn't want that in the same place where they're looking at all their observability data? All right, one more, and it's my favorite by far, because you know, at the end of the day, as a CEO, I do care about the bottom line and, and our investment in our technology. And, um, and like all of you, we're all investing in the cloud. And what we hear time and time again from our customers is that they're investing big time in the cloud. They want to enable their development, their development teams and their operations teams to be flexible and get the infrastructure they need when they, they need it and move fast. But it's really, really hard to get a handle on when you're over-provisioned and where are there opportunities to optimize without compromising performance. We hear that time and time again from our customers. So one of our engineers in the, in, the, in, the, in the New Relic Services organization actually had a large telco tell them about this problem, so he built something for them on New Relic 1. And now all of you can deploy it too. We call it Cloud Optimize for free. So what this does is it looks across all your New Relic accounts. It marries it with the Amazon price list. And it measures where your under or your over provisioned hosts. What do we mean by over provisioned? Well, there's a slider that allows you to find it. So I've kind of dragged this around. Basically, it says if, if you peak at 50%, that's the highest you peak at in a week, has probably 50% memory and CPU, you could probably go with a smaller instance without taking risk on, on, the, on the health of that instance. And here's the dollar value of you optimizing all that stuff. And while this is test data, we've tried on a few customer accounts and we've regularly seen, I've seen million dollar saving opportunities inside some of the largest enterprises by simply right sizing the instances that they run on. And as we increase our migration to the cloud, those numbers of those savings opportunities go up or those opportunities to optimize go up. So it's not enough just to show the aggregate dollars. We can, we can organize this in a variety of ways by, by New Relic application or by account so that you can slice and dice it and say, all right, how does that break down? That's a big number. Who do I go bug first, right? Well, we'll organize it in the right way so you can find out where your low-hanging fruit is. Um, we, uh, and then, when you want to go to the details, we've got the details. So this will show, and we export it to a CSV so that you know, a bunch of people can operate on it and put a plan together. So, so for example, this particular instance peaks at 3% CPU, 31% memory. Here's the network activity to know that it's not just doing nothing. Um, so don't, don't decommission it, that's for sure. But basically, this is an example where, you know, it's a micro going to a nano, but here's a more specific one that's probably a big opportunity, right? So um, this particular one, we expect you can go from a, uh, this instance type, which costs $383 a month, to one that's $165 a month without sacrificing any performance. And we do that across your whole environment. Who would like to use that today? It's free. Okay. I think this gives you a sense of why applications can do so much more than dashboards. So that's, that's, the, that's it for the demo. We can, we can go to the slides. Um, so we've got so many more that we've built. I only showed you some of my favorites. But let me show you some other ones. One I'm really proud of is that we did in partnership with Split. Split is a world-class feature flag company. Do many of you use, any of you use feature flags? And you use feature flags, we see that as an increasingly um, popular way 
to have control over production and to run experiments without taking the risk of deployment. So it helps you, helps you move faster. But anytime you change a feature flag in production, what you are effectively doing is you're changing the behavior of software. And it's great because you've got that flexibility, but you need to measure the impact of that change. So now, with, with this partnership with Split, we now have the capability of showing the performance of the feature with the, with the flag on and with the flag off. Sometimes people run it at 50-50 or some percentage. Um, confirm that the error rates are consistent, hopefully zero in both cases. But if, heaven forbid, you see a spike in performance, response time, or error rate, you can kill the feature flag right from the New Relic 1 UI all in one place. That's what an observability platform can do for you. So that's fantastic. That's also, um, I believe that's going live today. If not, it's, it's going to be a fast follow. All right, the next one I'm going to show is the site analyzer, the most beautiful UI. How, what do you think of that one? Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> so the story for this one is um, we have one of our um, product leaders at New Relic, Buddy, who is a, a a true domain expert in browser performance has been his life's work. And he said, Lou, he joined us about seven months ago, and he said, Lou, what I want is a simple business explanation of the business impact of performance on, um, of my site. And, and what I mean by that is, if the customer has a slow experience, how much more likely are they to bounce? How much longer will they spend on the site? Help me explain to management why we should invest in performance and what the cost of slow performance is in real terms that they can understand. Well, that's all in our data, but you know, we present them in these charts and dashboards and, and eyes glaze over and they don't understand it. Well, two days later, Joel took that napkin and he built this, and now you can use it. It's the New Relic Site Analyzer, and it will show your bounce rate for all of your customers that are in the satisfying uh, category that hit a certain performance threshold. And then there's the folks in the middle with tolerating and the middle that are frustrated and the last that are frustrating. We've tried this with a couple customers and we are stunned to see the difference, the bounce rate on just the frustrating to, you, you can see a doubling of bounce rate when, you, when, you, when your performance degrades. But make it clear to the business what the impact is of your, of your web performance all in this gorgeous New Relic 1 observability application. It's on GitHub, clone it, deploy it, it's yours for free today. So that's really cool. One more, customer journeys. Um, I told you we've got a lot of stuff we're announcing. I mean, you guys keeping up? This, it's incredible how much stuff we're shipping. So customer journeys, this is a gorgeous, it's like the funnel on steroids, which allows you to define a business process and the stages that people go through on your website for your most critical business processes, and then define segments so that every one of those columns are key segments you can, you can look at and then we'll highlight um, when you're off track on all of these things. Um, so gorgeous user interface, the kind of thing no dashboard could ever do. And it's, and, and it's interactive, so when you click on one of these segments, you get a nice drill down. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of software. And it's open source and free for you to play with. Um, and, and, and what was really cool is one of our customers saw that at that future hack event, and I said, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to marry that with the business data, because my business team knows the actual dollar value of a customer moving from step A to step B, knows what it's worth to us, knows what, how much it costs when it doesn't work. And so he put a financial model capability onto it and is now measuring the health of their business in real time in a way that no other product can do. That's what's cool, because that's, that's when you have the platform combining what you know about your company with what we have in, in the telemetry we collect to present in business terms what's going on in, in, in your digital world. So that's really cool, too. So in, so in short, we're announcing and shipping 12 observability apps. And if you want to get any of these installed on your New Relic 1 account today, go to the Hacker Lounge. Just right outside here, we've got a bunch of folks there. I think they're going to be very busy, so be patient while you wait. Um, but they'll teach you how to install them yourselves. And more importantly, not only install these, but have a look at the source code. If you know React, if you know GraphQL, you're literally seconds away from building your first app. I'm actually, all right, I'm going to, how, how am I doing for time? Oh, I'm low on time. I wish I could show you how to build an app, but I'll show it to you. Come to the Happer Lounge, I'll build an app with you. All right, so we've announced six amazing things today. We've announced New Relic Metrics, New Relic Traces, and New Relic Logs. Three new products for you. 
the key takeaway is you can fully embrace and be fully successful on the New Relic platform and have the very best observability platform without using a single one of our agents. Now, we think you're going to love our agents, and, and our agents are, are incredibly powerful. But I, the reason why I say this, I want you to understand how different New Relic is today from the New Relic you may have known from years past. Fully embracing open telemetry, open sources of data, is the best place to put it. When you see how fast New Relic logs are, when you see the applications you can build in this data, you can see how you can dashboard it, you understand why we're the best for sending your open data into New Relic to complement the agents that we've always delivered. We're announcing beta for New Relic AI. Let's reduce your alert noise by 80%. Take that alert fatigue out. Resolve problems faster. Understand what's going on. Use AI to make troubleshooting more effective. We're announcing programmability, the first and only platform of its kind. It's not a platform unless you can build software on it. I've shown you the power of this platform because I've shown you 12 amazing open source applications, including one that could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars on your cloud spend out of the box. Those are all free for you to use immediately. That's all part of what we're announcing today. And it's all rolling up to the, the essence of what we offer for all of you, which is the world's first observability platform. It's open, it's connected, and it's programmable. It's the first of its kind. And why does it matter? Well, because we're all on a journey together to deliver more perfect software. That's what we're here to do, and we believe the New Relic observability platform will get you there. Thank you all, and have a great conference. Thank you.